Today we're building a $1,000 gaming PC with blistering speeds inside of this little guy. This is the Silverstone SG13. I'll call out the other parts as we go about the build, but the inspiration for this build actually comes from all the hype surrounding the Xbox Series X. At the time of filming, Microsoft has just unveiled all the specs for their latest next-gen console that's slated to arrive later this year, and boy, does it look pretty impressive. I gotta say, I was kind of impressed to hear some of them specs. It's basically a little beefy gaming PC. So that got me all excited, and that's why we're building mini PC today. But before we continue, this video is brought to you by Manscaped. Now, everything on this wall here has a story, including this pair of scissors right here. I actually have been using these to trim my junk for like the last six years. I know, you'll never look at these scissors the same again, that's fine. And while they've gotten the job done more or less, they're not very forgiving when you miss. So the folks over at Manscaped have finally developed the Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer. It features a safe edge ceramic blade so you don't accidentally nick or cut those precious family jewels. It also runs for 90 minutes on a single charge, so the only thing longer than its battery life are your hairs downstairs. Did you notice there's also an LED on the end of it? That way you're not shooting in the dark. I do wish it was RGB though. Now this thing might be small, but it's powerful. Take it from someone with first-hand experience. It has a 7,000 RPM motor. That's faster than most fans you put in your PC. It also has quiet stroke technology. Try to say that without laughing. That means it's really quiet under operation and it features low vibration so your wife doesn't steal it. It is my humble opinion that this is the most cutting edge piece of technology ever designed for your balls. Get 20% off and free shipping with code BITWIT20 at manscaped.com. Once you're there, I would suggest the Perfect Package 3.0 kit, which gets you the biggest bang for your buck. When you subscribe, you get 20% off your order instantly, a new replacement blade refill for your trimmer delivered to you every three months, and for a limited time, subscribers get the Shed Travel Bag and the patented high-performance anti-chafing Manscaped boxer briefs. Thanks, Manscaped. Now I can use my scissors for opening packages instead of trimming mine. Click on that link in the description below, guys, to get 20% off and do its besties for your testies. Uh, now, the one thing we don't know about the Xbox Series X is how much it's going to cost. Personally, I don't think the Xbox Series X is going to launch for $1,000. It's probably going to be a lot less than that. But even if it was, let's just say hypothetically it was $1,000 and it was the exact same price on day one as this PC that we're building today, there's still a lot of other factors involved that you can't really quantify or put a price on. Like all the benefits of the PC platform, here's just a few of them. How much you value each of these things is going to vary wildly depending on who you ask. So I'm actually curious to hear from you guys. What do you think about the Xbox Series X? How much do you think it's going to cost? And what do you think a gaming PC would have to cost compared to that figure in order to be considered a console killer to you? Just some food for thought there, but let's get into this build. So this is, uh, once again, the Silverstone SG-13. This is actually the successor to the SG-05, which I built in many years ago. My first home theater PC build was in this case's Ancestor. So I'm very excited to be bringing it back to some degree. It does have a few more bells and whistles up its sleeve. It's been a bit more updated for uh, 120 or 140 millimeter AIOs and cool things like that. Unfortunately, I won't be taking advantage of that today, but who knows, maybe I'll upgrade this thing in the future. Okay, four screws in the back are removed. I just gotta slide this giant cover off with one hand, which is very difficult. Nope, it's not gonna happen. Hold on. There you go, my trusty tripod to the rescue. All right, should be able to slide it off. Oh wait, no, oh no, it just, it lifts off? Oh, the old one had to like, you had to like start here, go down, and then it had to slide into like the grooves of, of the frame. This is so much better. I'm falling in love with Silverstone all over again. Oh, good Lord. Try not to break the new case, Kyle. I I really love how simple this interior layout is. There's nothing fancy about it, just super straightforward, but it just works so well. So you've got your motherboard here that just goes flat like that. So it's gonna be laying horizontally. Rear IO cut out right there. Your SFX power supply goes at the back. Actually, you can mount a full-size ATX unit here if you want to, but we're gonna be doing SFX. You've got two expansion slots here. It looks like you may even have room for a 2.5 slot card. You definitely have room for full-length graphics cards. Of course, your clearance might be affected if you were to install like a 140 millimeter radiator with a fan or two in there. Up here, we do have have I have no idea what this is. I'm gonna guess this is for a three and a half inch drive, maybe another two and a half inch drive too, but I also see mounting points for an SSD, two and a half inch drive right there. It just mounts straight to the bottom of the case. This is just a bracket to hold, to help hold the uh, the power supply in place. And then I think that's pretty much it. What is this, a case review? No, we're, we're doing a build. All right, I'm gonna shut up now. Build, Kyle, build. Okay, last thing I'll point out, full mesh front panel, 120 or 140 millimeter fan or radiator supported. Look at that, look at all that breathability. 
Oh. Now I should point out the actual dollar amount of the parts that I'm using today for this build are probably a little bit over $1,000, but I put a PC part picker list that's gonna give you the exact same performance in the description below, with just a few slight hardware changes that doesn't really compromise anything in terms of in-game FPS and things like that. The reason being is that I already have comparable parts lying around and I don't really wanna buy parts that I don't actually need if it's just gonna create more waste and take up more space in our limited inventory room. This is the Asus ROG Strix X470i Gaming. It is totally overkill for, for this build. In the PC parts picker list, you'll see that I actually included a B450 board that's gonna get the job done just as well. Uh, you're not gonna be utilizing any of the fancy features of these higher end platforms anyway, so you might as well save some coin by going B450. Our CPU of choice at the core of the system is the AMD Ryzen 5 burr, 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 1600 AF. The AF's not there, AMD doesn't officially list it, but this is the 12 nanometer refresh. This is essentially second gen Ryzen. Consider this a Ryzen 5 2600. It is comparable in terms of performance and it is essentially essentially that exact chip. It comes included with the Wraith Spire cooler, which is the only thing that really kind of concerns me with this build because I'm not sure if it's actually gonna fit under our SFX power supply once it's all installed, but we'll work with it, we'll improvise. That's what this channel is all about, is not really knowing what the hell we're doing. And break the seal. Oh, oh, could have, it could have ended badly. Oh, actually it did end badly. You know when you're doing this stuff, guys, building the PC? Use two hands, don't be me. Or if you're gonna film it, get a buddy, you know? Get a friend, something that I don't really have. Oh, look at you, fresh and unopened, you sweet silicon virgin. The best thing about a new CPU, hands down, is the smell. There isn't any. Now, actually, before I start handling this guy, I'm gonna first remove these mounting brackets because we do not need them for the stock cooler. <laughs> You put your socket arm up, you put your CPU down, you put your socket arm down, and you get some thermal paste. You make an application that the internet will doubt. That's what it's all about. And then we get a <laughs> oh, shoot. This is the Wraith Stealth. I thought it came with the Spire. Well, this is better. This is, this is actually going to help our chances a lot for clearance. Oh, oh, crap. And the thermal paste is pre-applied. I, I should have thought of that. You know what? I like my application better, so. Yeah. Check out my maneuver with this thermal remover. <laughs> I think we've waited long enough, CPU. Tonight, you and I make contact. No, it's too much pressure, no! Other thing that's much easier with two hands when building a PC, IO Shield installation. This IO Shield is popping. Oh, it's popping. In you go, baby. In you go, slow but steady. What, what, what am I? doing, oh my god. I swear I do this for a living. And we're off to the races with our first motherboard screw. Make sure not to over tighten. I've asked a lot of things to strip for me. A screw ain't one of them. Oh yeah, CPU fan, here we go. Can't forget the CPU fan. We don't want to have any problem with the post. Oh, shut up. Flick it twice for quality check. Oh, silly me, forgot to install the memory before mounting the motherboard. Who knew that filming yourself while acting like an idiot kind of makes you an idiot. By the way, this is 16 gigabytes of G-Skill DDR4. This is the Ripjaws 5. DDR4 3200 speed because I don't have 3600 speed memory on hand. Well, I do, but it's much more expensive RAM than this. It's like the Trident Z RGB stuff. And we're trying to we're trying to keep things under budget here. So 3200 speed, although I did manage to get 3600 speed in the PC part picker list because it was the exact same price as the 3200 speed kit. Oh, yeah. By the way, the CPU cooler is pushing on our memory just a bit. It's getting a little close here, guys. I mean, it's not enough to really worry about much, but <laughs> personal space, boys. You ever heard of it? Front panel connect. Dude. Silverstone should have sleeved these in black, right? I mean, it would have looked so much better. I know you can't see inside the case, there's no window or anything like that, but like my gynecologist says, I'm anal. <laughs> I think this one goes right here. Are you positive? I'm sorry, Martha. If I could just hit reset on all of this. No one wants me around, likes how I sound. Front panel audio. Ooh, SSD time. Gotta flip that bill. Now this SSD I mount in here is a 480 gig Hyper X 3K that I had lying around. A pretty old drive. I actually put a one terabyte team group SSD in the PC part picker list, which is what I would suggest if you are gonna be building this uh, system for longevity because 500 gigs can get filled up pretty quickly with how large some of these AAA games are getting nowadays. Also one terabyte is what the Xbox Series X comes with. So we gotta keep pace with that. You know, I'm gonna remove this tray thing. It's kind of in the water. One, two, three, four. You cables are out of order. Somebody call management. Cable management. Consider yourself managed. You know what I totally overlooked? A fan. I, I'm gonna go get a fan. Obviously, we'll have to add that to the cost of the build. So add, you know, 10, 15 bucks, you know? I, I, obviously, you could spend like $100 on a fan these days with cut RGB and crap. But we're just gonna get something basic, BRB. Okay, I'm back with a fan. I got a 120 milliliter fractal fan. This is not one of their premium Venturi fans. This is the X2 GP12 that can be had on Newegg for roughly 10 bucks. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this sucker. We're obviously gonna wanna mount it as an intake so it's blowing cool air into the system. And I gotta pop this guy up. 
Can I get some fan screws? Can I get some fan screws, please? Thank you. I got you, fan. I got you by the ball bearings. Made you my bitch. All right, that uh, ought to do it. And before things get much hairier, I'm gonna install the SATA cable on my SSD. Oh, how I miss M.2. If you can afford an M.2 SSD in this build, do it! Okay, I have messed up yet again. So I was planning to use this very lovely SF600 power supply from Corsair. It is a small form factor or SFX unit. But for the life of me, I cannot find my SFX bracket, my uh, full-size ATX to SFX bracket adapter thing that uh, I need to actually mount uh, this unit into this case. So I'm just gonna have to use a big boy PSU after all. This is the CX. 650M. I do think that uh, even 600 watts is, is more than we really need here. But if you can afford it, I do suggest to get at least a 600 watt, maybe a 650 watt unit in here if possible, because that'll give you some extra headroom when it's time to upgrade. A couple years down the line, you want to throw in a faster running GPU or more power hungry CPU with more cores, something like that. You'll have the extra headroom to do that. You won't need to buy a new power supply. That's one of the nice things about PCs is that you can upgrade. You, you don't have to be stuck with five-year-old hardware by the time you replace it. Now we want to make sure the fan is facing up here so it's not competing with our CPU cooler. And also this case has ventilation at the top for the power supply so it'll be able to breathe nice and easy. This is a semi-modular unit. You can see that I've already plugged in all the cables we'll be needing. And PS, yeah, installed. It's time to plug some shit. And our graphics card, the final part to the system, which is the RTX 2070 Super. This is the Zotac mini version. It's about 8.3 inches long, and while this case can accommodate longer GPUs, I do like to have a little bit of breathing room uh, just on that side of the graphics card. So this is a beast of a GPU. RTX 2070 Super is basically RTX 2080 level performance. This absolutely annihilates 1080p gaming, pretty much maxed out settings across the board, super high refresh rates, but really where you wanna be at with this card is 1440p. And in the majority of AAA titles, you could max out all the settings and still run well over 60 FPS. You know, you could use it for 4K gaming as well. I don't know if it's going to be able to run 4K 60 as smoothly as the Xbox Series X. Of course, there's always the question of graphical fidelity, how good the game looks. But the other nice thing about PC gaming here is that you're not locked to a specific resolution or frame rate. So if you wanted to play a game at 1440p to get those higher frame rates and a uh, higher refresh rate for a smoother gameplay experience, you can do that. And of course, you can always find exceptions to the rule, right? Like there have been some Windows Store games that have had locked frame rates, which is just terrible. But by and large, PC games in general uh, allow you the freedom to display them and run them exactly how you want. We are almost at the finish line, folks. You guys gotta get up close for this one. And I just wanna stick it in. Yay. All right, and down we go. Here we go. The last time you're gonna see those beautiful gold contacts. <gasps> yeah. By the way, if you're looking for an easy way to cut down the cost of this system and you're okay with sacrificing some performance, you can just swap out this GPU for something more modest, like the RTX 2060. EVGA's got their 2060 KO that'll easily shave off roughly 200 bucks off the total cost of this system. There's also AMD's Radeon RX 5700. I mean, both of those options are super solid. They'll do high frame rates, 1080p, ultra settings across the board. They'll even let you play a handful of games at 1440p over 60 FPS. So really not a bad way to go if you're trying to save some coin. Not to mention when you have the extra dough for a higher end GPU, you can just swap that out. It's super easy. It's actually one of the easiest parts of a PC to upgrade. And just like that, my friends, we are done. Oh my gosh, let me grab this. And there she is. One zip tie is all it took to bunch up these cables. And just look at how much cleaner it looks. Well, okay, from this angle, it doesn't look that great. It's obviously not gonna be perfect, but with the majority of cables above the fan and the rest of them beneath it, we have a nice clear path of airflow from that front intake fan to our CPU cooler. Now, obviously the ATX unit is less than ideal because it's completely covering the top of our CPU cooler. That's why I wanted to go with the SFX unit because as you can see, it would have only covered roughly half of the shroud, which we'll get around to testing in just a moment. Over here, not much to see other than our Sexa GPU. Thank you, Zotac, for keeping it mini and giving us some extra clearance here. This is just gonna help with thermals and keep the system from uh, being overly cramped. So all together though, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Why don't we fire this guy up and see how she ruins. All right, this is actually being recorded the next morning, so sorry if it sounds like I just woke up. I did. But it's my first go at trying out this system, and you can already see, just right off the bat, CPU temperatures are not acceptable. I think this has a lot to do with the fact that we ended up having to use a full-size ATX power supply instead of my initial plan, which was going with a smaller unit that wouldn't eclipse the CPU cooler nearly as much. So you can see we're definitely suffering right there. GPU temps aren't looking that hot either. Uh, well, actually, they, they are looking fairly warm um, at 87C, but I also think that any of the hot air wafting off of the CPU cooler because our CPU temps are so hot 
high are also negatively impacting our GPU thermals further. Oh, the other thing I should mention that's also warming up our GPU is that I overclocked it. I put a 125 megahertz offset on the core clock and that's uh, that's definitely not, not doing us any favor. So I might dial that down actually, but at any rate, I wouldn't say this the system is usable. Well, it's usable, but I wouldn't recommend using it in its current state. The temperatures are just too damn high. So we are gonna have to make a little change here. I'm busting out the Noctua NH-L9A low profile CPU cooler. This is gonna add roughly 40 bucks, 40 to $50 to our build. So that's not great, but if it's gonna help us lower our CPU temperatures, then it's well worth it. Cause the way things are looking now, this is just, this is just unacceptable. So I'm gonna swap out the CPU cooler really quick and hopefully that alleviates our temperature some. All right, so I swapped out our CPU cooler. This went in no problem, but due to how high our temperatures were on our CPU and our graphics card, I figured we might need a little more help than just a simple CPU cooler swap. So while I was tinkering around with the CPU cooler, I also realized that we do have mounting points on this case for the SFX unit. We just don't have a bracket. So there's these large gaps, but obviously for a more permanent solution, you'll want that bracket just to uh, provide more support because you can see this, this unit is only held in place by two screws right now. So it's totally fine temporarily just for demonstration purposes in the video, but I'll eventually want to get a bracket to make that a bit more secure. But look at this, look at just how much more, look at this gap between the CPU cooler and the power supply, how much bigger it is. It's almost like two inches now, as opposed to half an inch. Plus the unit just doesn't come out as far, so it's not really eclipsing the CPU cooler like it was. And then the last thing I did was I swapped out the 120 fan for a 140 millimeter fan. This is another fractal fan, not one of their premium ones. This is probably another 10, $15 fan. And that's just gonna help pass more air through the case uh, that uh, hopefully will get sucked up by our CPU cooler. But uh, with those three changes, the CPU cooler, SFX unit, and the fan, hopefully that'll put us in a more comfortable thermal position with our CPU and graphics card. Uh, one way to find out though, let's put this back together and fire it up again. All right, we're back in the game and I've been playing for a good 45 minutes now. And you can see right off the bat that our temperatures have come way down. 76C on the GPU, 75C on the CPU. Obviously I've seen cooler in my day, but you know what? For a little hot box like this, small form factor PC, running a AAA title at 1440p max settings, I'm not disappointed. It's pretty impressive how effective those changes we made to the system uh, were on our temperatures. I mean, we literally dropped 20 degrees on the CPU. If there's anything I've learned about building in this case, the SG13, you should try to use an SFX power supply if at all possible. Using the full-size unit is just gonna encroach on, on your CPU cooler. Temperatures are just gonna be way too high. That is, of course, unless you're using a liquid AIO. Obviously, I'd have to do some testing there, but your CPU temps would be much more indifferent to a full-size ATX unit if it's relying solely on the front panel for intake. Our RAM usage is looking pretty good. We're only eating up about six gigs right now, and uh, we have plenty of overhead for other things. If you wanted to multitask, maybe do some streaming. Frame rates are looking really strong. Again, this is uh, 1440p, so 25 60 by 1440 uh, max settings. We're on the epic preset for Fallen Order. And you can see we've been averaging around 80 FPS, which is just buttery smooth. It would be even smoother if I was gaming on an actual gaming display. This is just my streaming monitor, so it's 4K 60 Hertz. But pair this with a 100 Hertz FreeSync display or something like that, oof. It's, it's gonna be nice. By the way, you can see our CPU and GPU temps have creeped up just slightly. We're hitting around 80C now, which is a little bit warmer than I usually like to see, but at this point, I would just start messing with the fan curves, trying to get those temps down, and maybe even also consider undervolting our CPU to keep the thermals in check even further. But overall, very happy with how the system's running now. Gameplay is totally smooth, and the graphics are just really easy on the eyes. It looks fantastic. But that's gonna do it for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think about the PC and also your thoughts on the Xbox Series X, if you're excited for it, if you're just kinda meh, like, I don't know. I don't know what people are thinking right now, especially in the PC enthusiast crowd. A lot of people are saying, I've seen people on Reddit and stuff saying the Xbox Series X is gonna be a game changer. Other people are like, ah, it's just rinse and repeat. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Feel free to discuss amongst yourselves. And uh, thank you for watching again. Toss a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed for more tech content on the way and check out bitwit.tech, our merchandise store. Thank you so much for your support there. Every dollar spent in the store goes right back into the channel so we can continue bringing you awesome content. At least we hope you think it's awesome. Thank you guys so much again for watching. Have a good one, and I will see y'all in the next video. If you're feeling down, I'll be around. I'll never let go. Unless you're HD audio, then you suck. And no one likes you. And you should probably end it all.